right, so today we are solving radical equations. So please tell me. Let's do this nice and neat. Um, okay, so if I have addition, what's the inverse operation? Subtraction. And if I have subtraction, what's the inverse operation of that? Addition. Addition. And if I have multiplication, what's the inverse of that? Division. And division? Multiplication. Multiplication. And squaring. Square root. And if I have a square root, you square it. So that is what we're working with today. All of these. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Tons of fun. We started it and we're going back to it. Ready? Okay. How many solutions? What? <laughs> How many solutions, roots, zeros are possible? How about this one? The black one. No roots. Why? It never crosses the x axis, right? What about the purplish color one? One root. Touches right there. One root. What about this one? The blue one? <laughs> Two roots. One right here. And one right here. Two roots. That's it. This is the graph of a radical. Okay? It's only like half the parabola. Do you know why? Because if you have a square, the square root is the side, right? Because what is the square root of x times the square root of x? x. So it's just one side of the parabola. See that? Okay. So how many roots does the black side, the black one have? None. No roots. And the purple one? One root right there. And the blue one? Only one. So what's the difference between these two? You're only going to have no roots or one root. You're not going to get two roots. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's look at these. I didn't even do it on paper. What would Y have to be in order for it to be four? Sixteen. Right. All right. That's us checking it. Number two. Can you tell me what Y would have to be for this one? That's a little harder. Okay. Eighteen, right? Because if you kind of undid it, if you put this inside of here, it would be two threes inside, right? And nine times two is eighteen. Okay, let's do it the traditional way. Let's square both sides. When I square both sides, a square and a square root cancel each other out, correct? But this one you have to be careful because I'm not just squaring the square root, I'm also squaring the 3, right? So this one cancels, and what am I left with? Uh, y equals 3 squared is 9 times 2, which is 18. We need to check it. If I put 18 in here, what would I get? Let's check it with purple. Red? 
Let me check right here. If I made 9, I'm sorry, if I made y18, squared 18, 18 is really 9 times 2, which is really 3 squared times 2, which is 3 root 2. Does it check? Yes, it checks. So that's it. And that's where it went too far. Well, what did we do in the last one? <laughs> How did I solve this? I squared both sides, right? What's the inverse of a square root? A square? Actually, let's just square. If I have to square, in order for it to be equal, I have to square everything, correct? So I'm going to square this, this, and this. Is that better? These cancel out. These cancel out. And what am I left with? Negative x equals times 7. Divide by negative, and what do I get? Negative 700. Does it work? Let's check. So if I were to put negative 700 back in here for x, wouldn't it be negative negative 700? Right? If x is negative 700, then doesn't that say negative x? Well, isn't that negative negative 700? It's a positive. Which is really... 7 times 100, which is really 10 squared times 7, which is 10 root 7. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Yes. Let's try this one. Okay, what do I do with this one? Square both sides. One second. Okay, when I square both sides, this square root goes away, and I'm left with 2x equals what? So 1x equals 32. Let's check it. So 2 times 32 is how much? What's the square root of 64? Does it work? Why? It's a negative 8. When I, these, this is really important, guys. Whenever you're squaring something, if you square negative like that, you lose the negative sign. So this is an extraneous solution. We're going to talk about that in just one second. Recording. Okay, so this is, is that the same one we just did? No. This equation has no solution, and I'm going to show you why. I wonder if I can pick this up. can't. No. Okay, so this has no solution, and I'm going to show you exactly why. Actually, I can do it this way. I'm just going to copy it. This equation right here is y equals the square root of x. Okay? What happens when we have x squared looks like this, right? What happens when I add 1 to it? You guys remember that? Uh-huh. So if this is x squared, x squared plus 1 shifts up 1. x squared minus 1 shifts down 1. So what do you think this one's going to do? First of all, let's get it equal to zero. It would be okay. So, what do you think? It, what do you think this part does to it? The plus five. It makes it go what? Up five. Oops. 
Why? Oh, that's a good idea. One, two, three, four, five. What part of the equation do you think makes it go over here? The x plus 3, because when you solve for x plus 3, what do you get? What does x equal? Negative 3. See how it shifts to the left? 3, 1, 2, 3. So my whole point in this is why does this have no solution? Remember the very beginning graph that we did? It never crosses. It is, is it ever going to cross the x-axis? No. So whenever you have something like this, where it says negative 5, it's not, it's going to go up. It's going to shift up. Yes. I do. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're right in the middle of the lesson. Guys, can you tell me exactly why this negative 5? Why is it only when it's a negative number? What if it was negative 9? Where would this end up? Up 9. So when it's, on, when it's negative on this side, guys, if you add it to this side, so it looks like this, it's constantly going to make the graph above the x-axis. And if the graph's above the x-axis, it's never going to have a solution. Yes, exactly. Okay? Make sense? No? If I want this in Y format, I want it like this, right? That would be Y right there. And that would make the graph go up. Okay, enough of that. I think I'm going to skip. What's the answer to this one? Nope. Negative 25. You should be able to do that in your head, right? Square both sides? Then divide by negative? What about this one? Nope. If you square both sides, you have to square this and this and this. So that would be 25 times 2? <coughs> okay, let's move on. Pencils down. Using only the guess and check method, find a solution for each one below. Check that out for a second. Okay, what do you guys have? Why 4? Because the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 2 equals 4. What about this one? 16? 14, because 14 plus 2 is 16 is 4. 4 equals 4. Why are the answers different? Because we were guessing and checking. I know that 4 is whatever the square root of this number is. The square root of 16 is 4, so I know that I must need 14 plus 2 to make 16. I'm going to show you another method, but that was just in your head. The point, the point of this is what, what, compare and contrast these two. How do they look alike? They have exactly the same numbers, but this one says take the square root of x. This one says take the square root of x after you add 2 to it. Do you see how those two things are different? You don't see how those two things are different? Okay. So let's work off that. So here are your steps. I'm not going to take the time to write them down right now because we're running out of time. All right. So my first step, please stop talking. My first step is to use inverse operation. Gemma. You have to do, or PEMDAS. You have to do gamma in reverse. You have to undo it. So, yes, I saw it. So, if I go in reverse, what would I do first? So, how, is there any addition or subtraction to do outside of the radical? No, it's not inside the radical. This one, however, is different. Okay, can I do anything? I'm supposed to use inverse operations to isolate the radical.
this is the radical sign. Is there anything on this side of my equation other than a radical sign? No. So we're done with that step right there. What's the next one? Square both sides. <coughs> so let's square both sides. I'm going to square this side and this side. What do squares and square roots do? They cancel each other out. So what am I left with? 3b minus 6 equals 36. Now I can do that, right? Why are you, Levi, why are you not looking up here? Sit up, please. Okay. Add 6 to 36. 36 minus 6 equals 36. Okay. Add 6 to both sides. 3b equals 42. Divide by 3. I can do that in my head. 7 times 6 is 42. Cancel the 3. What do you get? 14. Isn't that easier than dividing? All right, let's check it. You must check on your homework to get credit. It doesn't have to be a long check. Let's check it really quick. Here's my check. You'll know, because the check will come out wrong. All right. So what is, listen up, guys, what is 14 times 3? We already know because we did it. Are you listening up, guys? What is 3 times 14? 42. All over. What is 42 minus 6? 36. 36. What is the square root of 36? 6. Does it check? Yes. See how fast that was? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, it'll be on the homework. Yes, it'll be on a test, guys. <laughs> okay. Yes, you have a test before the final. Okay. Yes, it will be on YouTube. Okay. Yes, I was recording that. Yes. Okay, moving on. So, 3 times the square root of b minus 6 equals 6. What, how are these different? Because this one, I have to isolate the variable, I'm sorry, isolate the radical first, right? So, what would I do first? Add 6 to both sides. Once I add 6 to both sides, is the radical by itself now? No. It's got a 3 in front of it. We're talking inverse operations, right? What's the inverse of multiplication? Division. But you have to do this one first. Once addition and subtraction is done, then you would do the multiplication. Okay, so now I get the square root of b equals what? Now what do I do with that? Square. Both. What's the inverse of a square root? A square. So I square it. That cancels. B equals 16. Not really that hard, right? Let's check it. Check. 3 times the square root of B, which is 16, minus 6 equals 6. 3 times what? The square root of 16. Minus 6. 12 minus 6 equals 6. Check. And Levi says he doesn't understand, but he's not even looking up here. Okay, you guys ready? Try one for yourself. Try this one. 3, 2, 1. Okay, so you just told me, Levi, how to do this. How do I do it? Add 9 to both sides. Once I add 9 to both sides, I have the square root of 4x over 5 equals 12. Square both sides. Cancel. Cancel. And now I have 4x over 5 equals... I'm just going to leave it 12 times 12. Now what? Multiply by what? Or... Five. 
because it canceled. Everything canceled. The inverse. The inverse of four fifths is five fourths, right? So x equals whatever you get left. So x equals the four cancels, and what's left over? Uh, three. Three. Twenty four. Twenty four times five. Well, it would be easier than doing twenty four times five. Using the calculator. No. Twelve times five is sixty. What's sixty times three? Sixty times three. One eighty. One eighty. You do that in your head. Numbers send. Numbers send. You like about it? I like it. What? Uh, uh, it's a box. It's a box. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One more. What can I do to simplify both sides before I square them? What does both sides have? No. What do both sides have in common? They're both being multiplied by a factors of two. Couldn't I divide both sides by two from the very beginning? Yep, then you'll have one Then I'll have the square root of n minus five equals two root five. Now what do I do? I got you right here. Okay. You square it. Square it. Square everything. Square this, square this, square this. This cancel, these, that cancels, what's left over? N minus 5. Equals? 4. Times? Uh, 5. Yep. Then it's um, 20. Yep. N minus 5 equals 1. Add 5. Or take it by the way, it'll be 4. N equals what? N equals 25. One and then you would check it. Okay. One more. We don't have one more. Dude, I call the All right. What did you learn today? Square root equations, right? Rattles equations. What would you say are the two most important ideas from today's lesson? Square and both sides. Inverse operations. Squaring both sides. There was one more really important one. Check it. Check it. One more thing. What about this? Which one of these has no solution? Which one? The one with the zero at the end. No. Which one has no solution and why? There's one up there. Not 12. No, not 15. 73. No. No, um, the answer last problem, what was it? It was like 25. 180? No, 25. 25. Which one has? No. How do you know? Yes. 18. Why? Because it got, sh well, no, because it's once this five goes on the other side, it would be shifted up. Okay? Good job, guys.